you know, while we're talking about restored covers or reproduction covers or damaging comics or in damaging any way. comics exactly right well done well done again it's okay i did that on purpose to because i knew what we were talking about next i'm, you, you I'm just glad you didn't do it on the front me too you did it on the back i, I don't care left. about the back it's a, it's a fake cover it's the front oh the front God. is what i wanted dude oh. i had to get i got this from the uk oh wow yeah i, I paid a little more than i would like to admit <laughs> probably should have for uh, a blank cover like it's that, a blank but? cover man that's it's, cool it's fake though i like it i think it's kind of interesting all right so we're talking about reproduction covers we're talking about covers that aren't real right we're also talking about you know restoration a little bit we're talking about making something new that wasn't there tampering a little bit with comics and that got me to this next subject of the show where i kind of want to do a community shout out we're talking about a facebook page that i follow that i i learned a lot from and i wanted to bring it to the community's attention we're talking about hero restoration now what spawned this idea I was chatting with Jeff on the mic last week. I remember week. that, yeah. What was going on? It was a slab that he wanted, but that had restoration that was done to it. So in his mind, case closed. No, pass. That's correct. Some members of the community don't like restored comics. It's a hard line. They say no. Or, you know, they're going to have to decide whether or not they want to get like a higher grade restored purple label versus a non-restored blue label. You know, it's going to be cheaper. You may get that higher grade, but it's not all original. There's some stuff happening to it. Collectors, they vary. But I like to think right now, based off of kind of the community in the comment section, let us know what you think about Restored Comics. We'd like to hear from you. I think that over time, it's gotten worse and people don't want it nearly as much. And based off of like how Jeff talks about it, even Russ, I think that that right there is an indicator. But I was going through Wizard Magazine, right? I found a handful of the early issues this past week. And I was going through and I found a couple ads for comic book restoration companies. And I was reading through it thinking, oh my goodness, like, what is this? Like, there's got to be more to this. A community of people okay with restoration that they have like reason to put an ad in a comic book collector's magazine, the view was different back then. Restoration wasn't looked at as a negative thing as much as it is today. There's a lot of people who don't care. We were talking about Todd McFarlane having some restored comics in his collection. Clearly he doesn't care either, right? So Hero Restoration is a restoration company. And I think you can learn a lot from these artists because what they do is a bit different because some people may poo-poo restoration, but sometimes restoration is a good idea. And I see it for what that is based off of the type of work that they take on. So I showed you this Facebook page. What did you see? It's a lot more that goes into it than you would think on the surface. I hear restoration and my rookie brain pictures somebody going in with a Sharpie and filling in some blacks that got maybe faded out over the years or coloring in some red stuff that maybe got smudged out or fixing a staple maybe or some, some really individual kind of small, tiny little things. But this goes way above and beyond what I had imagined it would be. This is a recent post they did. Look at this video. Multiple comic book covers, but similar to this fake comic book, but these are real comic books in this video. I mean, we're looking at first Spider-Man, we have an X-Men 1, and we have just the cover. In order to restore a comic book, especially the cover, you got to remove it from the stables. Ugh. So look at all these pages. And comic fam, for our audio listeners, we're looking at Page after page after page of key, expensive, some Golden Age comics, a lot of comics that you would recognize, but just the cover because the staples were removed. Because how are you going to fix them? So I want to get into this a little bit more because I think we can learn a little bit, especially if your gut reaction is, why would you ever do this? Okay. Why would you ever do this? How could you ever touch a comic book? Why would you ever want it restored? There's never a time that you would want your comic book restored. Okay. Well, here, I'm going to answer your question with a detailed analysis of how they restored an Avengers one. And then you can consider this a little differently if you look at restoration as a bad thing. So take a look at this Avengers number one, the previous condition of this book prior to being handled by heroes restoration was as followed. So on this Avengers one, they had trimmed the sides. So all of the sides, uh, not counting the spine, the top, the opposite of the spine, and then the bottom, a little bit was trimmed off of all three of those edges. And it is noticeable. That's right. It was already trimmed. So the first thing is, the comic's already been tampered with. That's a good point. Like, I, I wouldn't have thought that. If it's already tampered with, then you might as well, I guess. Right. Well, 
you keep reading, it says there was moderate amateur color touch already on the cover. All right. Also, there's a moderate amount of what was a combination of tape like adhesive with paper carriers. There was added paper to this comic book. Also, the book is just generally and very low grade. Take a look at the art. It may not look like it right now. We'll show comp comparisons here in a second for a before and after. But if you look at the trimming that's gone on, you're missing art. You're missing parts of Loki's arm on that classic Kirby cover. And this book was not a good restoration reversal candidate, as Hero Restoration says on this post. So some people are like, oh, let's buy a restored comic and let's undo the restoration, give it the blue label that it deserves, right? Well, you can do that sometimes. In this case, professional and very clearly by the pictures, you can't do it with this book. This book is long gone. This is a yeah. restored book permanently now and forever. So what do you do? So in a case like that, you have a little more freedom, I guess, to kind of try things <laughs> with it. Like, I would never attempt any of this stuff. I am nowhere near qualified like Mr. Hero Restoration is. But it's very interesting to see what somebody like that can do when they uh, really dig into a comic book, so to speak. So there has to be limits. How does someone work this out? They put a line in the sand. Don't make that grade bump above this. So don't go out of your way to do more work than necessary because there's only you're working with a value. Like no matter what, there's going to be a value to what you do. And you can pay a lot of money to get this fixed. So let's go over what they did to this comic book. It's amazing. They started by removing the tape. They extracted the tape adhesive stains out of the paper. They washed the cover in a water-based solution. Ooh. If you can see the pictures of this comic fam, the before... It looks so grimy. You can see marker on the inside cover. This is a prime indicator if there's color touch. Because on the cover, you, it may look like black marker like you described, right? Right. Like someone may have just blocked the spine. You're thinking, oh, it just looks like black. You're not going to see it. No, it bleeds through. You can open it up and you can see marker on the inside. That is your indicator that there is color touch. Correct. And notice this inside cover. This is clean. Leaf casted. New paper pulp around perimeter and spine. Oh, that extra paper. Is gone now. How it got trimmed before? They're replacing the uh, stuff that was trimmed on the edges. Ooh, and they added paper. Okay, so. I didn't even know you could do something like that. They're adding paper to fill out the cover's edges. How do you add paper but keep the comic looking the same? Magic. Wizardry. Alchemy. Right? I don't know what these people are doing. Alphonse, where are you at? No. You have to pay an artist to redraw. It's a very specific kind of craftsmanship. They had to get the gloss to match. They had to seal it. And they had to assemble this book. There was added color touch. And they had to extend out the art to the new dimensions. Extending out the art. They had an artist. Shout out to Sophie Vitri for the excellent color touch and art recreation. So we're looking at a side-by-side -side now. Notice just a little bit of art. How much further this comic book goes. It's a masterpiece. This is art. Now it's maybe not something some collectors would want. But argue with me here. Is this a process that you can't respect? This is amazing. It's something I had not even looked into. And it, until you kind of see exactly what the nitty gritty of this looks like, it's hard to really get a full appreciation and understanding of what actually goes into it. And it makes you, yeah, it does make you appreciate and respect it a little bit more. Right. It's like, do you want the one version of the comic that looks accurate, that is damaged and worn, or you could pay and have it spruced up a little bit, have it touched up, Look a little bit more like it did the day it came off the uh, off the press back in the day. So, kind of just depends on what the individual collector wants. And so again, some people think that oh, you know, I don't want to touch an existing comic, and I hear you there. I personally don't want to do that either. But I've also never been presented with a, a a comic that's so expensive where I would consider doing it. But this is an example that I think a lot of people don't consider. What if it's already messed up? If you have a really really expensive important key that's already been yeah manipulated and and color touched and and messed with beforehand like at that point dude if my dad gave me an, like this particular comic yeah if he like if it was a gift from when i was a kid or something that happened to have color touch and have problems maybe i did it who knows like that book means something to me the key value it would be secondary like sure. so a lot of people their their comic books mean more than just like what they paid for on the day or like a when dollar they got it. or something yeah it's like there's sentimental there's value sentimental value that person, I could imagine going, like, yeah, I'm going to pay what I want to pay because keep I'm keeping it. this particular book intact. Yeah. Exactly. So 
hope the comic fan found a little value to that. Very. I want to give a diverse opinion on this show because everyone has different opinions about comics. We all collect differently. So I figure highlight someone in the community. I'll put their Facebook link in the description below so you can follow them, see the cool work that they're doing. Side note, they also mentioned that the like second to Spider-Man character that comes in the most for restoration purposes is Wolverine. Oh boy. It's kind of a fun little coincidence, but like it makes sense. I think that right there is super telling that Wolverine is like such a focus for comic book collectors in 2020. That's very true. Take a look at this picture. It's freaking gorgeous. They're, they're saving comics over there. I'm, I'm interested to know what the community thinks about restored comic books. Do you buy them? What's your line? What's too much? I want to know about it in the Let's comment talk. section below.